Welcome back to the Falcon Dive, everyone. So glad you joined us again. We have some awesome guests from our Office of Diversity, Inclusion, and Belonging today. So uh, why don't we go ahead and have them introduce themselves and also share a fun fact about yourself. Yeah. Um, so my name is Nathan Riel Elness. My formal title is the Gender and Sexuality Outreach Coordinator, which just means I get to work with all of our LGBTQ plus students and programs here on campus. Um, and my fun fact is that during college, I did a choir tour through Europe. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Everybody's reacting. Whoa, Nathan! <laughs> give us a little, give us a beat. No, I'm just kidding. You don't. <laughs> okay, that's that's an outtake later. <laughs> That is not for this time. Okay, got it. Sorry. Hi, I'm Antoinette, the student program coordinator for the Dib office. One interesting fact about me is that I'm from San Diego, California. Um, I moved all the way across country, just left everything and was like, let's start this whole higher education. And here I am right here at University of Wisconsin River Falls. Okay, fancy. We've got like a lot of little traveling in the mix today, like a European moment, a California girl. Okay, this is so fun. <laughs> Shelby. Uh, my name's Shelby, and I'm a student at University of Wisconsin River Falls, and I work in the Div department, so that's part of it. But I also am the president of our Gender and Sexuality Alliance. So, yeah, well, co president, actually. Oh, and then ooh. I guess. A fun fact about me is that I'm partially colorblind. <laughs> I don't remember hearing that in any of our meetings, Shelby. No, no interesting <laughs> facts like that. That's I a, forget about it. That's a Falcon Dive exclusive. <laughs> yes, it all comes out on the dive. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Wow. Yeah. Well, those are some fun facts for sure. Thanks for sharing, everyone. And welcome again to the Falcon Dive. I am John, and we have Nicole, the co-host of the Falcon Dive. So we are going to jump right into some questions. To start off, um, would someone just share what the DIB office is, what you're all about? The DIB office is what we refer to it as on campus. Um, that stands for diversity, inclusion, and belonging. And that title really came from the fact that we want to be an office that represents every person on campus, regardless of what their background or experience is. We strive to have inclusive practices through networking, through activities, through learning and uh, learning practices, I would say. So let's say we have speakers or we have events for students to come and join us and learn about a little bit more of cultures, identity, values, beliefs, and kind of, um, how do I say this? We want to push the envelope of talking about topics that are not necessarily talked about uh, throughout the day, throughout the week, or anytime. So that's what we strive to do is create a topic and try to have a little bit more uh, educating pieces in our office. What <laughs> makes DIB so unique to UW River Falls? From my personal experience, I did so many different college visits and this specific university, the reason I came here was because you had such a strong like gender and sexuality alliance and then there was also parts of that that kind of echoed into residence life so we do have like a gi floor which is kind of in like hand in hand with the dib office and also there's just so much cultural diversity in terms of the orgs that we have i don't see a lot of those in so many other universities and that was something that was a huge draw for me uh so i think someone mentioned this a little bit earlier that you host a lot of events could someone share a little bit you know, what kind of events are you hosting? What's happening in the Dib office throughout the school year? Some of the stuff that we get to do regularly is we work, like Shelby said, with all of our identity-based student organizations to plan cultural events, um, festive nights, educational opportunities. Um, and then we just get to do some really fun things that not everybody else gets to do. Um, we know that student involvement gets to bring like big concerts or like big fun events or speakers or magicians. Um, but we really try to bring in an educational aspect to everything that we're doing because we know that we want our students to be prepared once they graduate to go out into the world and have a different experience. Um, and so that's really what we're looking for. Um, and the other part of what we get to do, to do a lot of work with faculty and staff as well on their own personal and professional development so that they are making sure we're providing the best classroom environment available as well. Whoa, I didn't know that part. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> All around wholeness, John, the whole thing here. It's a whole community, are you seeing it? Yeah. Okay. Making sure he sees it, everyone. 
Martin and I work with student uh, orgs, identity-based orgs. So what I do is kind of create programs to help students along the way within their activities. So let's say we have BSU who have African Eye and Soul Food Dinner. They would come to me and they would ask me like, hey, Ange, can you help me get a speaker to come in? Can you help me get provide food if we're looking for outside sources? So a couple of events that I've personally worked on was um, the Native Pride dancers they came in uh and they had a whole show native aztec dancers came it was so fun um, i think last year we had just a small room but this year we want to make it more big but i think with the whole covid situation we're going to look and see what the differences of our activities are going to look like a little bit different so um my part this year is going to help students provide a good educational uh, like insight into their cultures and provide that online since we are moving more towards online. So mm -hmm. I believe that that's great, but we also work with other student um, identity based orgs. So like SFO, we had like um, Women's Month, we had Bonnie Shade. So our office also works with the Aspire program. We also have 10 students who work with five students five. each that are new to the campus and they go ahead and help students either find clubs to um, kind of get integrated into the college life. Um, this year, Shelby was one of my um, students that I had one-on-ones with. That's why I said in the beginning, I was like, I never knew you were colorblind. So as an office, we get to connect with students deeper who are first gen sometimes and we also do that. Um, so we do work with a lot of other offices to create a more collaborative pieces. Shelby, do you have any favorites or anything to add about events? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do a drag show every semester, um, the GSA does. And uh, our last one uh, had a lot of good feedback and a lot of people were <laughs> really excited about it and it was really cool, so. And when we are back on campus, Nathan, where is your office? <laughs> Yeah, so we have some really exciting things happening. We are located in Rodley Hall. Um, so as students have come for campus tours now recently, that's where they'll start. We are up on the second floor in the corner. Um, so we have the Dib Lounge um, room 270. And then as of this year, now that we moved into the building, we also have a Pride Lounge um, in the building, which is amazing. Um, it's the first time we've ever had one on campus. Um, and we are definitely excited to have that space and have students kind of coming in and flowing through that area. We love that. Awesome. All right. It is time for some fun mystery questions. <laughs> so get ready. Uh, nothing too hard. We already touched on it a little bit before. So the question for each of you is, what is your favorite vacation destination? For me, I would say San Diego is definitely my favorite destination just because when I was younger, I don't feel like I was able to explore what I wanted to explore. But as my life kind of went on, I was so intrigued with the school. I wanted to get up and leave and experience something different. I feel like now that I'm in the Midwest going back home, it is kind of like a mini vacation because I'm only coming back twice a year. Um, so when I come back, I'm experiencing those pieces for myself. So I went to the zoo recently. I went to the beach. I went to Balboa Park. I went, I walked around the Padre Stadium. So I must say that my favorite vacation spot would be like in the country in Japan. So not like the city parts, mm. because there's like a lot of really cool nature, um, like spaces that have like a lot of cool spiritual energy attached to them. And people are always like, there's spirits of the mountain and stuff. And I've always wanted to go look at all that stuff because it's so cool looking. But yeah, I've never gotten a chance to go. So I'm thinking maybe when I graduate. Maybe when you graduate or if you want to study abroad with River Falls, we're not going to stop you. <laughs> I mean, like we're kind of known for it. So that's an option. Trying to think of so many different things for vacation spots. Um, probably my favorite one um, was my husband and I got to do horseback riding in Jamaica on our honeymoon. Um, it was probably just one of our like favorite activities together. Um, so that's probably like the big vacation. Otherwise, the other one I think of all the time is just going to my grandparents' lake cabin um, up in northern Minnesota. So hmm. okay, life's better at the lake. It is always. <laughs> I was like, are you going to also tell us your favorite vacation spot? Because we all know it's Alaska, so you don't need to say it. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out with us on the Falcon Dive. Um, to the Dib office, the three of you, thank you for spending some time with us in this space. Thank you for being 
such a sound support system for so many individuals on this campus. This office is truly a gem to this university, so really appreciate the work you're doing there. All right, everybody, thank you for hanging out with us on this Falcon Dive episode. We will catch you on the next one. Bye!